Hello. Uh, every year on the 4th of July, I try to read the Constitution. My wife, Marcy, makes fun of me a bit for this tradition. But of all the things that I can think of doing, something about reading the United States Constitution seems fitting on America's birthday or whatever. So, uh, in, in Marcy making fun of me to some friends last night, those friends uh, encouraged me to read the U.S. Constitution, put it up online, Facebook or whatever. Um, so, here we go. I'm not really going to make a lot of comments. I'm just going to read through the Constitution because, as my friend said, there's probably lots of people who have never read the Constitution. Here you go. Constitution of the United States. Transcription. Okay. It's inscribed by Jacob Shallus on parchment, and uh, you can see that at the Rotunda in the National Archives Museum. I'm on the National Archives uh, founding docs transcription of the United States Constitution. Here we go. We the people of the United States. That's, that's us. I mean, it was them then, but we, we are the people of the United States. In order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, I guess more technically that's us, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Article 1, Section 1. All legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in a Congress of the United States, which shall consist of a Senate and a House of Representatives. Section 2. The House of Representatives shall be composed of members chosen every second year by the people of the several states. Of course, there's been several more added since this was written. And the electors in each state shall have the qualifications requisite for electors of the most numerous branch of the state legislature. No person shall be a representative who shall not have attained the age of 25 years and been seven years a citizen of the United States, and who shall not, when elected, be an inhabitant of that state in which he shall be chosen. Thankfully, he or she now, of course. Representatives and direct taxes shall be appointed among the several states which may be included within this union according to the respective numbers, which shall be determined by adding to the whole number of free persons, including those bound to service for a term of two years, and excluding Indians not taxed. And then here we have the famous, or infamous, I should say, three-fifths of all other persons, the three-fifths compromise. Again, these are all things that you can go and read about and should go and read about. Um, but I'm not going to comment on them at present. But uh, there's some, of course, tragic history here. The actual, and of course, these these guys here, what you see in the in the blue. Let me see if I can get on that. You can, of course, hyperlink, and um, the, these will have to do with amendments and whatnot. All right. The actual enumeration shall be made within three years after the first meeting of the Congress of the United States. And within every subsequent term of 10 years, in such manner as they shall by law direct, the number of representatives shall not exceed one for every 30,000, but each state shall have at least one representative. And until such enumeration shall be made, the state of New Hampshire shall be entitled to choose three, cheese three, Massachusetts eight, Rhode Island and Providence plantations one, Connecticut five, New York six, New Jersey four, Pennsylvania eight, Delaware one, Maryland six, Virginia ten, North Carolina five, South Carolina five, and Georgia three. When vacancies happen in the representation from any state, the executive authority thereof shall issue writs of election to fill such vacancies. The House of Representatives shall choose their speaker and other officers and shall have the sole power of impeachment. Section three. The Senate of the United States shall be composed of two senators from each state, chosen by the legislature thereof for six years, and each senator shall have one vote. Immediately after they shall be assembled in consequence of the first election, they shall be divided as equally as may be into three classes. The seats of the senators of the first class shall be vacated at the expiration of the second year, of the second class at the expiration of the fourth year, and of the third class at the expiration of the sixth year so that one-third may be chosen every second year, and if vacancies happen by resignation or otherwise during the recess of the legislature of any state, the executive thereof may make temporary appointments until the next meeting of the legislature, which shall then fill such vacancies. No person shall be a senator who shall not have attained to the age of 30 years and been nine years a citizen of the United States, 
and who shall not, when elected, be an inhabitant of that state for which he shall be chosen. So, of course, here we're talking about the bicameral legislative branch, uh, which it leads off, the Constitution leads off with the legislative branch on purpose. Um, it's, uh, it, I don't know if I want to say it's the most important, important branch. I, I'm a big fan of the judicial branch myself, uh, but of, of course there's something about primacy of place in the Constitution. So, um, the Vice President of the United States shall be President of the Senate, but shall have no vote unless they be equally divided. Huh. The Senate shall choose their officers, their other officers, and also a president pro tempore in the absence of the Vice President or when he shall exercise the office of the President of the United States. The Senate shall have the sole power to try all impeachments. When sitting for that purpose, they shall be on oath or affirmation. When the President of the United States is tried, the Chief Justice shall preside, and no person shall be convicted without the concurrence of two-thirds of the members present. Judgment in cases of impeachment shall not extend further than to removal from office and disqualification to hold and enjoy any office of honor, trust, or profit under the United States. But the party convicted shall nevertheless be liable and subject to indictment, trial, judgment, and punishment according to law. Hallelujah. Section 4. The times, places, and manner of holding elections for senators and representatives shall be prescribed in each state by the legislature thereof, but the Congress may at any time by law make or alter such regulations except as to the places of choosing senators. The Congress shall assemble at least once in every year, and such meetings shall be on the first Monday in December, unless they shall by law appoint a different day. Section 5. Each house shall be the judge of the elections, returns, and qualifications of its own members, and a majority of each shall constitute a quorum to do business. But a smaller number may adjourn from day to day, and may be authorized to compel the attendance of absent members in such manner and under such penalties as each house may provide. Each house may determine the rules of its proceedings, punish its members for disorderly behavior, and with the concurrence of two-thirds, expel a member. Each house shall keep a journal of its proceedings and from time to time publish the same, accepting such party or parts as may in their judgment require sec secrecy. And the yeas and nays of the members of either house on any question shall, at the desire of one-fifth of those present, be entered on the journal. Neither house, during the session of Congress, shall, without the consent of the other, adjourn for more than three days, nor to any other place than that in which the two houses shall be sitting. Section 6. The senators and representatives shall receive a compensation for their services to be ascertained by law and paid out by the Treasury of the United States. They shall in all cases except treason, felony, and breach of the peace be privileged from arrest during their attendance at the session of their respective houses. And in going to and returning from the same, and for any speech or debate in either house, they shall not be questioned in any other place. No senator or representative shall during the time for which he was elected or she be appointed to any civil office under the authority of the United States, which shall have been created, or the em emoluments whereof shall have been incre increased during such time. And no person holding any office under the United States shall be a member of either house during his continuance in office. Section 7. All bills for raising revenue shall originate in the House of Representatives, but the Senate may propose or concur with amendments as on other bills. Every bill which shall have passed the House of Representatives and the Senate shall, before it become a law, be presented to the President of the United States. If he approve, he shall sign it. But if not, he shall return it with his objections to that House in which it shall have originated, who shall enter the objections at large on their journal, and proceed to reconsider it. If after such reconsideration, two-thirds of that House shall agree to pass the bill, it shall be sent together with the objections to the other house, by which it shall likewise be reconsidered. And if approved by two-thirds of that house, it shall become a law. But in all such cases, the votes of both houses shall be determined by yeas and nays. And the names of the persons voting for and against the bill shall be entered on the journal of each house respectively. If any bill shall not be returned by the president within ten days, Sundays excepted, and it shall have been presented to him, the same shall be a law in like manner as if he had signed it unless the Congress, by their adjournment, prevent its return, in which case it shall not be a law. Every order, resolution, or vote to which the concurrence of the Senate and House of Representatives may be necessary, except on a question of adjournment, 
shall be presented to the President of the United States, and before the same shall take effect, shall be approved by him, or be disapproved by him, shall be repassed by two-thirds of the Senate and House of Representatives, according to the rules and limitations prescribed in the case of a bill. And here we are beginning to talk about checks and balances. Praise the Lord. Section 8. As you can tell, I've been listening to uh, or watching, uh, binge watching a lot of Ted Lasso. So Ted Lasso. So that might uh, might come out in the intonation. The Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes, duties, imposts, and excises to pay the debts and provide for the common defense and general welfare of the United States. But all duties, imposts, and excises shall be uniform throughout the United States to borrow money on the credit of the United States to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states and with the Indian tribes. <laughs> to, every time, man. <laughs> Just, to establish a uniform rule of naturalization and uniform laws on the subject of bankruptcies throughout the United States. To coin money, regulate the value thereof and of foreign coin, and fix the standard of weights and measures. To provide for the punishment of counterfeiting the securities and current coin of the United States. To establish post offices and post roads to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. That's in the Constitution. That's so sweet. To constitute tribunals inferior to the Supreme Court to define and punish piracies and felonies committed on the high seas Arr! and offenses against the law of nations. To declare war, grant letters of marque and reprisal, and make rules concerning captures on land and water. To raise and support armies, but no appropriation of money to that use shall be of for a longer term than two years. To provide and maintain a navy. What's up, Rob? To make rules for the government and regulation of the land and naval forces. To provide for calling forth the militia. Call forth the militia. To execute the laws of the Union. Suppress insurrections. And repel invasions. To provide for organizing, arming, and disciplining the militia and for governing such part of them as may be employed in the service of the United States, reserving to the states respectively the appointment of the officers and the authority of training the militia according to the discipline prescribed by Congress. To exercise exclusive legislation in all cases whatsoever over such district not exceeding 10 miles square as may by the session session of particular states and the acceptance of Congress become the seat of the government of the United States and to exercise like all or like authority over all places purchased by the consent of the legislature of the state in which the same shall be for the erection of forts, magazines, arsenals, dockyards, and other needful buildings, and to make all laws which shall be necessary and proper for carrying into execution the foregoing powers and all other powers vested by this Constitution in the government of the United States or in any department or office thereof. Section 9. I don't have a whole lot more time on this one, so we'll have to take this probably branch by branch. Uh, section 9. The migration or importation of such persons as any of the states now existing shall think proper to admit shall not be prohibited by the Congress prior to the year 1808, but a tax or duty may be imposed on such importation. Again, a reminder that we are reading a historical document that needs to be interpreted generation by generation, right? Uh... Not exceeding $10 for each person. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus shall not be suspended unless when in cases of rebellion or invasion, the public safety may require it. No bill of attainder or ex post facto law shall be passed. No capitation or other direct tax shall be laid unless in proportion to the census or enumeration herein before direction directed to be taken. No tax or duty shall be laid on articles exported from any state. No preference shall be given by any regulation of commerce or revenue to the ports of one state over those of another. Nor shall vessels bound to or from one state be obliged to enter, clear, or pay duties in another. No money shall be drawn from the treasury, but in consequence of appropriations made by law. An irregular statement and account of the receipts and expenditures of all public money shall be published from time to time. That's a good thing. No title of nobility shall be granted by the United States, and no person holding any office of profit or trust under them shall, without the consent of the Congress, accept of any present emolument, office, or title of any kind whatever from any king, prince, or foreign state. That's an important one, too, as we know. All right, so I'm going to stop here, and now I'm going to pick it back up at Section 10 in the next video.